thoughts. Okay, hey everyone, it's good to see you here again. Uh, we are at the developers focus group meeting, and um, this is like a group meeting for developers and tech writers contributors you know, for everyone to know what is going on. Um, from the development projects going on in at chaos and uh, find a way to contribute here we try to practice questions uh try to find help if there is anything we are struggling with with regards to getting um uh, ourselves um some putting a chaos or trying to contribute also all right in, in order to also help us to become better at making high quality contributions we have decided to be hosting um workshops from time to time here at the meeting so that we can learn how to, you know, create stress-free PRs, well detailed permit that ensures that um, we have a smooth collaboration going on, even uh, within our developer community. So today um we will be listening to this model DC on how to prevent or avoid <laughs> conflict when you're trying to create your peers and when you do not fall into that um issue of having a conflict in your PR what can you do to resolve it that's what this month is going to be taking us this afternoon so I would be calling him up shortly I just quickly want to check our document so if you don't have the document let me let me quickly share with you Please write your name and yeah, a little of the icebreaker, what movie you're currently watching. All right, let me see what people have written. Hey, so Gloria said, Be Jetting. Is it the latest episode? Yeah, yeah. Ah, ah. I'm actually waiting. I'm actually waiting. <laughs> so much. So it, how how do you find it interesting, right? Yeah, quite. Okay, this mommy, why I think I saw it. Um, it's an Hollywood mo movie, right? Um, Nelson. Hi, Nelson. Are you there? Okay. So only this month can watch anime. <laughs> Okay, go ahead, Nelson. What did you say? I didn't get a question. I was called for some seconds. It's okay. It's okay. I said that uh, Mommy Why is a Nollywood movie, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, okay. How, how did you find it? Well, it's just the... I watched it because of the comedy part. I just wanted something that... Something that would just make me laugh. Because of the name, I felt it will be something funny. So, but it's, it's, it's good, yeah. It was better than I anticipated. Oh, nice. Nice one. Okay, let's move on to the um agenda of the day. So, Desmond, are you ready? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. All right, you can go ahead and share your screen and then we can begin. Please welcome this month, everybody, with your reactions. Thank you very much. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. Um, so, oh, let me share my screen. So, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Desmond, and uh, I contribute to Chaos. Um, projects like the well of us do. So, so today we'll be talking about um. Just let me know when you can see my screen. I don't know if it's showing. I think it's showing. You can see my screen, right? Hello. Yes, please. Yes, Hello. we can see your screen. Okay. 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 So um, it's just a workshop kind of to help us to you know prevent and. Also, know how to resolve conflicts when creating pull requests. 
So you know that um, open source is all about, especially we are in dev meeting, right? Especially developers, it's all about um, um, trying to fix an issue. And how we do that is by creating pull requests that gets merged to the main code base. So, and oftentimes there arise um, some conflicts, right? And maybe either um, your branch is out of date or some tests are failing or some um, contribution guidelines are missing. And um, yeah, we are like kind of conflicts when trying to make the code. Maybe the linking wasn't done well and the formatting of the um, code base wasn't done well. So um, those are things like we want to discuss. So it's a kind of discussion and um, I'm not like an expert on this topic, right? So it's a discussion, something we all learn from. So yeah, so let's get into it. It's going to be, it's not going to be like a long talk. And uh, I'll also be trying to do demonstrations where necessary. So, um, like I said, the goal of today's workshop is to equip us with strategies and best practices to minimize and resolve um, conflicts effectively. So, we are covering topics like um, best practices, um, understanding common conflict scenarios, techniques for handling those conflicts, and I also share some tools and resources that you can look up so that uh, you submit like um, good PRs. So now let's go to the best practices, right? So um, if you want to submit good PRs, you have to like know um, what are the best practices, like what's the best way, like the general accepted best way to submit PRs, right? So it's say frequent commit. So when when you're working on an issue, right? Let, let me see if I can if I can uh, sorry, if I can okay. Yeah, so when you're working on an issue, right? So you 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 would want to um frequently uh, commit your changes. So for example, if what you have to work on is um many, <coughs> sorry, if it is many, right, uh, you might want to um, break them down into individual tasks. And then you will have to, when you, once you complete the milestone, you make a commit. So these are like commit messages for this PR, right? Although the, they are the same, I kind of did um, a rebase here, so that's why it's appearance, right? So though they are the same, but for example, if in this task I have, um, let's say like four task check rows that I need to complete before this PR will move from draft to, you know, like live PR. So for every fix, for every uh, update I make in you know, all those check rows, I, I should make a commit and push to my own branch, right? If I, if I check any other box, I will make a commit and push. So this, it helps you to track um, all your commits, like on all the fixes you make for a particular um, task within a, an issue. So that's why if you want to remove a particular commit or a particular, let's say, for example, the person that created the issue now came and said um, the number three in this your checklist has been fixed by another PR, right? So the only thing you have to do is to, you can copy the ID of this commit and use a git command and, and, you, and you delete it, right? So, but the other ones will be there. So that's the, um, that's like why you should like kind of do a frequent commit and push your changes. And also, it will also help uh, some the person reviewing this code. Let's say, for example, I only make uh, changes in three files here. So let's say situations where I make changes to like 50 files and I put all of them in one commit, right? It would be hard to track, like, I, I'll, I'll be like, I'll be checking all the 50 files to see all the changes they make. It will be very difficult, but if I come to each commit, so each commit, if I click on a particular commit, 
each commit will have its own um yeah each commit will have its own so you see this commit now has only two um changes out of the total three changes right so i can also see this commit this is what happened in this commit and it will be easy for the person to learn your code to handle and also it's you should use like descriptive uh, PR titles and description, right? So, um, for example, now this PR I created doesn't have a descriptive uh, title, so I'm I'm pausing here, right? So, but this second one, it does. So when you look at it, say the first person is creating a login for the container, maybe a Docker container, right? So this. This gives you like an overview of what this PR is all about. And then, uh, so let's check the description. The description that this software fixes the issue it's trying to fix and kind of give an explanation and the steps involved. So, this is like a well uh, thought out description. But recently, we have. Um, a template that will follow now. This is an old PR actually. So recently we have a template to follow for our description. So this pull request template. So you put the summary of what you did and mention the changes that you make. If you are in the last uh, workshop, you should understand it by now. So, and then what are the ways to test out these changes that you made? How can I test it to make sure that okay, this is working, right? So this is also like very important descriptive uh, titles and descriptions um, that really explains what the PR does. Then branch naming convention. I don't know if we have a naming convention for our branch, but so I'm using this uh, event hyphen type for my own branch. So look, okay, let's see what the reference is used. used for the own branch. Uh, see. Okay, use it. Okay, the best use is their name and uh, hyphen log. So I think that works too. So I don't know if the branch naming convention has to include your name. I, I have no idea yet, sir. But if it does, so you have to follow that um, naming convention. So, or uh, if um, yeah, if it doesn't, I I prefer like using the a uh, short description of what you are working on. For example, this login this is working on logs so, so this 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 tells you that okay it works on this branch is about log and it was created at um this it was created by fit right and then when you look at mine you tell you okay this branch is for events type in Virgin API right so if you also um use the meaningful branch names and then small focus changes. Like I said earlier, when I was talking about frequent commits, so you 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 break your tax into focus, um, uh, break your uh, solution into focus tasks, and then you make the commits for each tax to make a commit. So avoid combining the whole feature and fix it in one single PR, right? And then reverse frequently. So you know that there are many people working on, you know, for example, this Virgin API, right? And probably there, are, let's say we have 10 tasks, there are 10 issues that are open and 10 people are working to fix the issue. So when, when um, let's say all of us started, okay, some people started earlier, some people started Um, your own um, base branch because you have to fork, so your own fork is outdated because the main branch where you fork from has new. Hello, everyone. I think um, this month we can't hear you again and we, we can't see your screen. Yeah. Wait. When did you lost me? I didn't know. Yeah. 
So at the point where you were saying we base the printing. Oh, oh. Okay. okay. So you so were saying that say, some people work earlier and some people work later. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll continue. So um maybe you have 10 different issues. Some people have already started working on some issues. Um another set of people started after the another set of people started after this first two sets. So if the first set make like um a key a PR that got merged to the main branch, or the, the rest of the people, their folks are, are updated, right? So and if they don't update their folks, which means to rebase to keep up to keep up to date with the base branch, if they don't update their folks, right? Then and they make their own PR, the whole code will be outdated. And if someone mistakenly merges to the main code, it will overwrite the stuff the other people did, right? Or it might even have conflicts. It might not even I allow you to merge because it will tell you that the files in this the files in this folder in or the code in this file and the code in this file are not the same. So it will tell you there is a merge conflict in it is two different files. So always. Before before you make a PR, always make sure you are in sync with the base branch, which is the, for example, which is this one. So this one, uh, this one is uh, my own fork. This uh, badging API is my own fork. And event type is um, a branch inside my own fork, not, not even the main branch, like another, a new branch inside my own fork. But I should always make sure that both this event type and the main branch in my own fork is up to date with this main branch in the Badger API. So that way I will have like the recent code and also test against the recent code to see that all my own changes work as well with the recent code. And code review. So sometimes if you're working on critical attacks and maybe when you're done, you, you can request for code reviews, right? If you submit your PR, you can request for Code reviews. You can submit as a draft PR and you know, ask someone to um can you help me a review? So for example, this is a draft PR. Let's say for example, I'm I'm done, but I don't want to push it live before. Uh like I want someone to review it first before I convert it from draft to like a review PR. I can come here and request for Enoch to review this. Enoch will get a notification and help me to you know review it if if if, there are, if some things are missing, it will you know it will communicate to me in the chat here, and I will update that before making this in my PR. So always always make sure that people review your code even before you create the PR is 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 good. Then testing so ensure that all tests pass before creating the PR. So if the code that you're working with have like a unit test integration test. Um, after your changes, you should run the test locally to make sure that all the tests pass. And if it requires that you also write tests for the new change that you made, you should also make sure that those test passes before you make your PR. Because um, code, uh, code base app tests is also like whenever you make a PR, those tests is also like run against the branch to see that everything passed. And if Everything in pass you have like a conflict, the code can't be merged once you start. So make sure that ensure test pass. Then documentation. If um you work on a new feature and it's um kind of bring a new perspective to how the application is being used or utilized, always make sure that you also update the documentation. For example, in the readme file, right? So if we go to pagin API. Um okay, there is no there is no readme file. For example, if there is a readme file on how to run this project and I make a change that changes how this project is run, I also should update this readme file to you know reflect that as well. So that's what the that particular project is all about. And um okay, we we'll talk about using CI C D pipeline to catch issues earlier. So uh that should be automated checks. So this one is more like on the end of maintainers to you know add automated checks. Um so that um, something like uh, using a host key 
to um, you know kind of get uh, errors that are in your code base maybe you have a function that is undefined and or using like all these linting um, tools so maybe you made a mistake or maybe there is a rule that say don't push your code with console.log inside it maybe you forgot to remove the console.log so all those um automated checks the maintainers should be able to add it to the code base so that before you room, uh, make the commit uh, it's it will flag it in your local or your uh, test editor the code editor and you have to fix them then peer programming so sometimes um if you might be working on an issue and it's not clear enough to you you can also request somebody in the community so okay uh, can we work on this together do you have the time um let's say fix the meeting on a zoom call like this or a google meet people work on the issue together share ideas together and um, get the issue fixed so that to be able to like raise a good PR. and also maybe if you have an issue with a uh, or having conflicts in your code and you don't know maybe how to fix that you can also back on somebody to you know do like a kind of peer programming session with you to get that fixed so that's why uh, it's an open source community you can always um, ask people to assist you so it's not like um, you don't have to prove yourself you're not working for an employer, or employer. yeah so you don't have to maybe prove that um, I know this thing. No, yeah. Here we all help uh, each other to achieve a common goal. So, peer programming also helps to achieve like um, quality PRs. Then, common conflicts. So, like I, I said, there are simultaneous changes. People working on different branches. These are the things that are sources of conflicts. People working on like a particular project simultaneously at the same time. I'm um, probably maybe. I'm making a changes, but it's for in another feature, but on the same file. Another person is making working on a new feature, but on the same file as well. So that if the if the other person push for me and gets merge, and I don't keep my own um, code base up to date, and before I push out, it will result to conflict. Then long lived branch. If a branch has been there, maybe there is an issue that has been pending for like months or years and it was started at the point and then it was paused right so and if they want to continue the issue and they still want to use that same branch to track it um, there will be a lot of conflicts everywhere because a lot a lot of uh, contribution has gone ahead like has been uh, merged to the main branch so there will be a lot of conflicts that along the branch and um, yeah that's a source of conflict and then another source of conflict is refactoring. So I I remember sometime I did a kind of refactoring for Badgin API. So Enoch asked me to do like a cleanup for the code base. So I have to change some of the function names to meet uh, the standard standard view of writing function for chaos projects. And I have to clean up the console logs. I have to clean up like many things. So let's say for example, after I did the cleanup and People that are working on other issues didn't like um, kind of rebase their branch and also like get those updates to their own branch. They will have conflicts, right? And then another one is dependency. So um, sometimes um, different version of um, dependencies we use in the project um, might also cause uh, a conflict. So we we'll always make sure that the versions are consistent right across all folks across all across anybody that is uh, trying to contribute then these are some of the impacts of uh, this uh, conflict right so conflict you know sometimes you might see it as something simple you know, but it's have like a kind of uh, a backdrop it brings to projects like slow development process reduce productivity like redundancy, you know, you have to like redo a work or do like a major refactoring, refactoring because of uh, maybe a conflict and delays emerging to the main branch. Maybe if we are supposed to ship version four um, last week, it might take like an extra week because there are conflicts that we need to 
your face and decrease the code quality because you are trying to you know uh, do fast and resolve some of these conflicts right it might decrease the code quality and then inconsistency in the code base and it might which we result in technical debts and then it impacts like the morale of the people on the team so every time maybe if, let's say for every every time you let's say you are a new um, contributor you are not yet like maybe familiar with git so most of the git stuff you know is uh, adding your commit pushing it to your branch and come and make we are right so if you are not yet familiar with how to rebase how to sync your own forks with the um, with the main branch and all that so anytime you come and make your uh, PR is to tell you that there is a merge conflict, you go back, fix it, maybe you start afresh, you you, you clone the main project again afresh. Because that's what I, I, I used to do when I, I don't I, I was like starting early. I didn't understand how it was. I would delete it. Hi everyone, is it just me? And when I come back, another person up. Hello. I've made something again. I have to go back, which is very frustrating. So uh, uh, it'll be like, oh, no, I'll, I'll do this again. It'll just be the issue. Oh, Hamza, hello, anyone, can you tell me if it's just me or it's this one? Actually, I think it's, it's breaking sometimes. It's okay. like it's breaking. Uh, yeah, okay, this one, we just want to make you aware that um, you're breaking and we can oh. no longer see your screen. Mm. What are okay, so what we what I think we heard last was that um, when you were just starting, you used to delete um, your entire... Mm? Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, we are close. Thank God. <laughs> So um, I said like I'm I was talking of impact on team morale. So those are um, conflicts can lead to frustration, like stress, and reduced collaboration. So I was saying like when I started uh, contributing to open source early, it has been a long time. So I don't understand Git like that. I I don't know how to use Git properly. So what I usually do whenever I submit a PR and it has major conflicts. Which means the maintainers can't make my code. They ask me to fix the merge conflict. I will delete my fork. I will refork the project and I will start afresh. And maybe I'll come back again. Someone has made something new. I'll have to like be repeating it like that. And at a point, you will get frustrated. At a point, you get frustrated. So, um, yeah, at the point, you get frustrated. So, it's also impact on team morale. So, and I said, um, continuous um conflict can extend the overall development and release cycle of a project. I said yes earlier. So you guys can see any right? Hello. Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. 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 So um, I want to talk about resolution techniques, right? So um identifying the conflict so you can let's say you have you have now you have the conflicts right so you can use the uh, each status and each different between the two um, branch to identify completing change so for example um if if um if um for example if, for example, if I have conflicts here that I can't make this code right, so first thing I have to do, I have to go to my own, um, my own uh, work of the budget API. And the, um, GitHub has made it easier. This functionality wasn't like, it doesn't, it doesn't used to be like this, but I made it easier for you to sync your branch 
regime update so you see that my branch is out of date with the main branch right so i come from here update it just click this update and it will replace my own fork to the main badging api fork. so if you check and i say this branch is not behind it then it's up to date right but then my okay okay i'm on the event type actually so yeah i've I've kind of uh, made this event type of this with uh, the main version API. So um, initially, you can use uh, this git command. If, before this uh, feature was added to the UI, you can use this command to check for the difference and see the file that has differences. And you can now um, kind of uh, make, make the update kind of pull from the main branch to your own uh, main branch in your fork and also probably sync it as well to your to the branch of the feature you are working so you can use git command like this status to know the status of your system and also this to know the difference between your main branch the branch you fork from and your own branch right and another way to resolve these things like manual merging. So um, I think from GitHub in a PR as well, you can manually edit codes from PR. Uh, yeah, you can. You can actually manually edit codes from PR here. So if if there is a merge config here, if there is a merge config here, right, uh, I will uh, manually click on, there is a button that says manual resolve to click on it to show you all the files I have uh, Conflict and you can update them manually. So that's like another issue, but I don't suggest you do that. Uh, maybe except for the, the maintainers might do that when they want to make one to major people's code, but individually you should always make sure you kind of do a, a sync from the from the parent branch to the fourth branch automatically so that you don't uh, copy what you're not supposed to copy or Sometimes you, you, you might lose your own contribution in the process of manual merging. So you can use tools like um, this uh, K difference to um, verify like difference between two branches and others. Or you can use your ID integrated tool. So your, for example, your Visual Studio Code has um, it has the a git extension that you can use so that git extension offers you um, you don't even need to use um, you don't need to use command again right so you don't need to use command again i'm trying to see if i can open my git my VS code so you don't need to use commands again you can just click buttons and get your issue or image config results so well thank you for that I'll come back to this here. Then rebase config. I've talked about rebasing. So use this rebase for cleaner history. Then also, um, while using rebase, you have to like be cautious of a complex config. Maybe config that is arising from different uh, um, branches or different sources, right? If it is just your own um, copy and the main copy, and then also the difference is not like too much, it's not complex. It's not there are not many differences. You can use the base and easily get yourself up and running. Right. But in some cases, you just have to pull from the um, the main the main branch. Uh, or you can you can just stash stash your own before before you you can undo your commits, right? When you undo your commits, it will be as if you have not committed before. The changes will still be there. You can stash them. Stash means removing them. And keeping them by the side so when you stash them you can now pull from the main branch and your own branch will not be up to date and then you go to your stash and apply it back to your code base that means those new changes you make you apply it back so that's also work as well i will share like a git uh, there's a link i'll share it's in this document i'll share this document as well so where you can see all the git commands and what they do and how you can use them in your Workflow. Then another way is to communicate. You can, just, like I said, you can talk to people, discuss with people, and they can help you to um, get the conflict 
things gone in situations where you have no idea what to do or you are not sure of what to do, you can communicate with people and people can always assist you. Then I've talked about testing after resolving. So you have like conflict resolution. So make sure you test after you resolve the conflict that everything works as expected. And in some situations, document your process and also have a, another person review your changes as well. So some of the tools and resources um, that is um, in line with this workshop topic. So version control like Git, you have to be familiar with Git and also GitHub Actions. So the GitHub Actions is what you use for continuous integration and continuous development, right? Deployment, sorry. So when 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 I push my code for a, a code base that has GitHub Action that automatically deploys the code to a server. So there are some checks that usually that they usually add to the workflow of the GitHub Actions. So when you push a code, it triggers those checks and it will tell you if you have a conflict or not, if your code pass, or it will trigger the tests to start running. So and other. And then code review to GitHub. So you can do peer programming, code review on the PR and other. So and then these are the resources. So this is like the Git documentation. This is like the cheat uh, sheet. Some of the like quick command you can easily use to in your you can easily use for your day to day um, you know GitHub workflow, a big Git workflow. So so there's Git start to use Git add file, reset file, then difference. You still know the difference uh, of of what is change but not stage. Then this one is what difference of what is stage but not yet committed. And this for committing, this for set up, this for setting up, and this for initializing Git and cloning a repository. This for merging. This for merging. This for login and inspection. This for um, sharing. So, or this for pulling. Yeah. So you want to pull something from a branch or a remote branch. You use this one. Then the right is you can use rebase or reset hard. So apply any commits of current branch ahead of specified one. So let's say um, this uh, other branch is ahead and you want to apply the change or the commits to this particular one, you can use a rebase. Then reset hard, um, this one also works for it's, um, it's a kind of a clear staging area and kind of a right before working tree. So but it's, it's, you only use this one on like special occasions. And then if you want to track uh, changes you want to know um which file like change the existing file path or move a file from one place to another you can use this uh git move this one is for deleting and this one is to show the log of uh, any file in any part right then this for stash so like i said stash is you save your modified and stage changes, like you save it somewhere, right? So if you want to um, uh, drop the stash, like delete it, you can use this one. If you want to see like a list of stash, you, you can use this one to get the list. So, and then there are many other commands so you can find on this uh, file here. So, and then you can learn about signing up your commits I think um, I think I talked about it in the last workshop, and also how to make good commits, like um, conventional way of making commits. How to write your commit messages um, so that it will be like understandable. Um, what kind of uh, you know, how to, for example, if you are making a fix, you start it with fix. If it's a new feature, you start it with new feature. If it is a documentation, start it with docs. Is a refactory, start with factory, is a test, is a, if it's a performance upgrade, you start it with this. If you are, if it's like it kind of added the CI CD pipeline, 
you start it is here. If it is a, a routine task, you can start it is chore. So you learn how to add all these things, right? Okay. So yeah, that's it for the resources that we need that will help us to um, learn about conflict resolution and even how to avoid conflict. Then you can also um, look up workshops like this. And the last one we had, there uh, yeah, are some tutorials and webinars online about Git and about the conflict resolutions on Git. You can check and you can check like YouTube courses online where you can learn also how to use all these uh, Git commands. Then how uh, collaborative techniques on while you are working on projects and also another way to prevent conflicts is um, regular communications, right? So if, um, for example, we are in this meeting now, let's say, for example, we are not having a workshop, we are having a discussion on this budget project and we said, okay, we'll be adding this to the budget project this week and all that. Then if someone that is not in this meeting, right, and have some a task the person is working on. So maybe we have discarded that particular idea, and but the person is not in this meeting. So the person has lose uh, information and might even go ahead to uh, work with the old plan. So after all the efforts and This, but also it is a contribution will not be accepted before. We have uh, the meetings, the standoffs, and all that. Then there should be established coding standard and PR guidelines, which we have. So you should always follow those contribution guidelines and mentorship. So for the new contributors, they should always pair with the experienced maintainers. And I also like to point out that if you are a new contributor, don't be scared of uh, maybe picking up issues to work for. Like I said, you are not trying to prove yourself to anybody, right? It's, it's an avenue to learn and to grow your skills as well. So you can say, pick, uh, you can you can ask uh, maybe somebody you feel like is more experienced that you want to pick this project and want um, to work on it together with the person. And the person still keep it, it's fine, right? Both of you can work on it together. So that's another way uh, new uh, contributors can learn. And also like, they will learn how to work with these, how to, you know, follow, uh, they will learn like all these procedures from the experience maintainers. And, um, okay, encourage pre-merge reviews and early feedback. I've talked about, you can request for reviews for your code mentioned on before raising like the real PR and encourage diversity and inclusiveness in contributions. Um so um how how you can um, um also like get to build the solutions that are not that, that, that doesn't have conflict or that are free of conflict is um, when you encourage like diversity so some people that uh, maybe they don't understand, let me use the example, they don't understand English. They don't understand English, right? So, but most of the stuff we do in code base are written in English. So they don't understand English right now. So, and how you can also uh, help is uh, either by uh, translating documentations having like a copy of documentation in other languages and also um, a kind of this pairing new contributors with experienced maintainers. So experienced maintainers can also help them navigate the language barriers to make sure that whatever contributions they are making is free of conflicts, right? Because of the maybe barriers between languages. So they might read something and they not understand it well as in, they might not understand what's like the purpose. So they might understand this some other way because that's not like their yeah, first language and all that. So yeah. And then documentation. So we should have a comprehensive contribution guidelines. I've mentioned about it. And always uh, 
we always like acknowledge and appreciate the contribution to foster like a positive community. So when we acknowledge um people's contributions, they will want to do more, they will want to you know customize want to do better than the did last time. So if I make a contribution last time and it has like 10 corrections before it was made and finally it was made, right? Maybe the next contribution I'll do, I will make sure that um, I do everything possible to make sure that okay, the correction will be reduced now. So maybe the things that I didn't learn in the course of that um, conflict resolution, I've, I've learned them. So uh, maybe I didn't follow some um, contribution guidelines on naming conventions, but in the previous uh, um, review, I've learned it. So, and I will be eager to make more contributions. And in doing that, the community will acknowledge you and it helps to like boost that positivity in the community. So, this is the end of my um, discussion. If you have any questions, no, you may have one or two questions, you can ask them now and I'll be able to answer. So there's nothing else to say, just to encourage everybody to, you know, um, make sure they follow all these uh, steps that I mentioned above, especially the best practices to avoid the conflicts, right? And when you have your conflicts, how to fix them, how to resolve them. So that's like the final. So if you have any question, you can ask me and I will drop the link to the I'll drop the link to the um documents in the chat. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, this this month. That was very, very, very educative. Really appreciate. It. Yes, you can see that people are saying thank you. They're saying they are clapping for you. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So, does anybody have question? This one, can she stop sharing your screen? Okay. So, if you're my hi, um, now say hi. Do you have questions? Hi. No, I, I don't have. Oh, well, okay. How about you, Fiona? I don't know. I don't. Okay, you're welcome. Um, I think this is the first time I'll be seeing you around. Is this your first time? Fiona. Hello, Adenka. Good day. It's not. I'm... <laughs> It's Sylvia. Sorry, I kept my full name. Probably I will oh. change the name so it won't confuse you again. Oh, okay. So I'm saying if you're more sorry about that. It's okay. No, no, no. All no right. Problem. Thank you, everyone. Um, so the next time I'm going to be reaching out to us in the Slack channel, you know, to ask for feedback on the workshop. Um thank you so much, Desmond, for taking out time to teach us on how to prevent and resolve conflicts when there is one, whenever we are creating up here. So till next time, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Yeah, bye. bye. Thank bye. you.